Hey people, so I'm going to go to another lesson. Today is on classifying particles and antiparticles. Um, so some stuff that we already mentioned and now subdividing them into groups, okay, according to their properties. Um, so go on the other videos, the previous ones. Um, I have a playlist on particles and antiparticles uh, or particle physics and a previous video to do with cayennes, pions, and mesons, so new particles and antiparticles if you don't know what I'm talking about, okay? You at least will get an idea of what is going on here. So, new particles. So, all these new particles that you can see in this nice table um, are particles and antiparticles. They are found, many of them created through high energy interactions and apart from the neutrino, all of them decay into particles and antiparticles, okay? So here are the particles, proton, neutron, electron, neutrino, muon, pi meson or pion, k meson or kion. So we know all of this already. We have their charges uh, comparing with a proton charge. So using the proton as the comparison, the charge of the proton as a comparison. We have the antiparticle in the symbol. So first of all, as you can see, they tend to have these hats, right? And then antiproton, antineutron, but positron, a little bit different here, antineutrino, antimuon. So since the muon is always negative, and antiparticles have the same, um, so equal charge, uh, but opposite. So it's going to be negative. This one goes on positive, and then the same rest mass. So the antiparticles for the pi mesons, that they can have a positive, negative, or zero charge. And then the K mesons um, is more or less the same, but you will see later on. The charges comparing to the proton charges of the antiparticles are always equal and opposite, if you look here in this table, to their corresponding, uh, corresponding particles. The rest energies are the same for particles and antiparticles, and they are showing here in this table, okay? You can see that when the charge is zero for the pi, the, the mesons, the pi and the k mesons, uh, the rest mass is different, but once they have a charge, they happen to have the same rest mass. And the interaction, strong, weak, electromagnetic, so here it is, uh, generally speaking, electromagnetic, whenever you're talking about charges, um, positive or negative, generally speaking, and then uh, strong and weak, you're going to see in a second. So that's a table that you can always write down. So you can pause the video and write down, or you can find this table elsewhere as well. But uh, yeah, make sure that you are familiar with this stuff. Now, we could divide then the particles and antiparticles that we saw into groups, okay? And as I say here, we divided according to whether they interact through the strong or the weak interaction, okay? So I will have hadrons or leptons, all right? So hadrons, they are going to be particles and antiparticles that can interact through the strong interaction. Examples are the protons, the neutrons, the pi mesons and the k mesons. So the pions and the kions. Leptons will be particles and antiparticles that do not interact through the strong interaction. So I am not saying that they are going to be weak interaction. I'm saying that they do not interact through the strong interaction. Examples are electrons, muons, and neutrinos. As a study, study tip here, sorry, uh, we can say leptons, starts with an L, is light and weak, okay? And then hadrons, starting with a H, strong and heavy, okay? Leptons, light and weak, so weak interaction, or at least not a strong interaction, light. So look at these particles, they are the ones that have the smallest masses and rest masses. And then hadrons, strong and heavy. Strong interaction, they tend to be heavy particles if you look at them. Uh, large rest masses or large masses overall if you think about protons and neutrons, all this stuff. So, um, hadrons, they interact through the strong interaction and through the electromagnetic interaction if they are charged. And this is for all of them apart from the proton. The proton is stable, okay? Hadrons decay through the weak interaction. So what I'm saying is they interact through the strong interaction, okay, uh, and electromagnetic interaction if they are charged. Now, if they decay, they decay through the weak interaction. 
and this is for all of them apart from the proton because the proton is stable. Leptons. Leptons interact through the weak interaction and through the electromagnetic, uh, sorry, electromagnetic interaction if they are charged. So basically, all hadrons strong, leptons weak, or electromagnetic for both hadrons and leptons if they are charged. If I happen to have a decay, then there is going to be the weak interaction for all hadrons apart from the proton. Um, now, all of them, they will have some uh, conservation rules that they need to obey. And one of them is the conservation of energy. So some slides ago, some PowerPoints ago or videos ago, you saw the conservation of charge. I'm, not, I'm now going to tell you about the conservation of energy, all right? So whenever the particles collide or interact, the total energy of the particles and any particles before the collision must be equal to the particle's rest energy plus the particle's kinetic energy. The total energy of the new particles, so from the collision or interaction, and antiparticles after the collision must be equal to their rest energy plus their kinetic energy. Therefore, the rest energy of the product, so what I get from the interaction or collision, is equal to the total energy before, before the interaction or collision, minus the kinetic energy of the product, okay? So again, the stuff that I get after the interaction or collision. So that's one of the conservations of energies, okay? So we need to know this one as well. Finally, matter and antimatter, besides of being grouped into hadrons and leptons, the hadrons can be uh, grouped further, okay? So they can be divided further because, you know, of course, this was getting way too easy. So hadrons, they can be divided further by from, sorry, as baryons or mesons, okay? So baryons are going to be protons and all other hadrons that decay into protons directly or indirectly. So anything that is going to go somehow into a proton is going to be a baryon. Mesons are going to be hadrons that do not include protons in their decay products. So they are going to be any particles, they are heavy and they interact through the strong interaction or electromagnetic if they are charged, but there is no proton whatsoever in their decay products. Hadrons, so both baryons and mesons, they are composed of quarks and antiquarks, okay? And this is going to be in another video where we are going to look at their compositions. Um, so uh, that's all really for today. So very, very quickly, remember that we can have the particles and antiparticles to di be divided as hadrons for strong interactions or leptons for weak interactions. Uh, leptons, they are light, so electrons, muons, and neutrinos. Uh, however, they can also go through the electromagnetic Electromagnetic, sorry, is the second time that I'm having a problem here with that word. Interaction if they are charged. Hadrons, uh, as I said, heavy. Protons, neutrons, and mesons, okay? Pi or K. Strong interaction all the time. Unless they are charged, then we have the electromagnet, uh, electromagnetic. Yep, yeah, I definitely have a problem with this word today. And then, apart from the proton that is stable, all of them are going to decay through the weak interaction. And then further on, so interactions, they need to conserve energy, so conservation of energy must happen. And overall, hadrons can be further divided into baryons and mesons. Baryons, if somehow protons are going to go directly or indirectly onto the decay, or if they are hadrons, they are protons already. Or then mesons, where you have hadrons that do not include protons whatsoever in their decay products. So that's all for classifying the particles and antiparticles. I uh, will stop now and I'll see you in another video, which is going to be on leptons. So bye.